and one more thing every person is different right every person has a different intellect so just in case your friend is able to do dynamic programming in like a week or two and you are struggling do not get demotivated because the thing is okay he was able to do it in 50 problems and let's say you will be able to do it in 200 problems but you can still do it in 200 problems right i myself was a very slow learner and had to solve around 2000 problems to get to where i am today there are going to be challenges everyone struggles everyone like everyone has this misconception these days that i am not able to solve these problems am i made for dsa but that is not the case each and every person who has done dsa who is good at dsa who is bad at dsa everyone struggles at dsa so you just need to keep in mind that this is going to happen and you just need to keep going so hi everyone today we have a special guest on our channel we have gorish with us so gorish would you like to introduce yourself Sure. So, hi guys. My name is Gorish. I'm currently in my third year from KJ Somaya College of Engineering in Mumbai, and I am currently an upcoming HW intern at Google. Yeah. So, before we go forward, can you explain your interview experience with Google? What all you faced? How was it like? Right. So, my interview experience was quite interesting. So, when I uh, wanted to apply at Google, I I wasn't able to even get shortlisted for the step internship. Right. So, I was like. कैसे तो करके विल ट्राई टू गेट दिस इंटर्नशिप मे बी इट विल हैपन मे बी इट वोट सो आई टू कर एफरल फ्रॉम वन ऑफ माई सीनियर्स हु इज एट गूगल राइट नाउ हिज नेम इज नवनी थिंगारकर इज एन एच डब्ल्यू एट गूगल वॉर्सो सो आई टूक इज रेफरल आई अप्लाइड एंड आई गॉट शॉर्ट लिस्टेड एंड आई वॉज वेरी हैप्पी माई इंटरव्यूज वर इन सेप्टेंबर सो आई गेव माई इंटरव्यू देर वर टू राउंड राइट राउंड वन वॉज डी एस ए राउंड टू वॉज डी एस ए i cleared them and then there was no response from their side so i waited for a month i waited for two months and then in december they told me that you did well in your interviews but the slots are over so i was very sad because i performed well but uh, i wasn't able to get in so by luck i don't know how in february google decided to open some more slots for their hw intern so i contacted my recruiter that time that uh, since i have already given my interviews and i have cleared them please do consider me for this and they seamlessly gave me the intern then uh, there it so the interview of google would have to be pretty difficult right like everyone talks about it the difficulty of dsa is pretty high in google's experience interview experience so how would you say you came up to that level of problem solving that you were able to clear the google's round of interviews right so when i was in my first year till my first year okay till 12th grade i had been a very average child and in my first year of college i was like okay i i want to work towards something and i want to work really hard so i came across uh, dsa and competitive programming that time and i immersed myself completely into dsa and competitive programming so by the time this hwe intern drive started at google i was very well prepared for the same so like uh, you were you were also a pretty good computer programmer you did computer programming along with dsa but if we think of a average student the average student who wants to crack a job at google someone who's not that good in problem solving how can you say ki they can become good at dsa to be able to crack the interview of a company like google what would you say for them right so the main thing that you need here is grit because uh, let's say unlike web dev or something like that you can let's say learn react in a week but you can't learn data structures and algorithms in a week you have to keep that mindset that for the next 3 or 4 months every single day i'm going to sit in front of my laptop keep solving problems there are going to be challenges everyone struggles everyone like everyone has this misconception these days that i am not able to solve these problems am i made for dsa but that is not the case each and every person who has done dsa who is good at dsa who is bad at dsa everyone struggles at dsa so you just need to keep in mind that this is going to happen and you just need to keep going right 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 but uh, still you would see right there's a lot of students what they do they go to contest whether it's a pre process contest or record contest and they sit for the contest they are able to hardly solve one problem or no, or no problems and they get demotivated very quickly they feel like ki dsa itself is not for them so how would you say ki one should tackle that situation where they're not able to solve any problem live in the interview or in a coding contest right uh, so i have 
friends right who have faced such problems so the main thing here is that let's say you solved a particular problem and you're not able to solve let's say the other problem or let's say you're not able to solve the first problem trees and something uh, advanced on trees comes up you can learn that practice a few problems and then you'll be well versed in that topic right and for the other case where uh, you knew the topic but you weren't able to solve it it just means that you need more practice on those kinds of problems and i think that is more or less it you there is some underlying concept that you lack right it is very okay to not know these concepts but what should you do let's say you gave a lead code weekly or a lead code bi weekly you are not able to solve the second problem look at the solution there will be two things either you knew what the underlying topic was but weren't able to come up with the solution or you didn't know the concept at all if you didn't know the concept you can look at how difficult it is if it is like very difficult and not related to what you're practicing right now you can leave it for later but let's say if let's say you are doing uh, something similar let's say you're doing a give a contest you see what weaknesses you have and you try to remove those weaknesses and you keep doing that again and again and there are just a finite set of weaknesses right there cannot be an infinite number of weaknesses so when you were preparing for dsa what were the resources you followed or if someone comes to you and they ask ki what kind of resources should they follow for learning dsa what would you suggest right uh, so uh, the answer changes a lot depending on which year you are in let's say someone is in first year right there is three three years of time that person has and dsa is something that one can do in let's say 6 months okay so why why should a first year person be like i want to do dsa rather to make things more fun to make things more easy for them i would suggest do competitive programming and that is what uh, i started out with there there is a course called tl eliminators i had enrolled in that and my journey started from that but let's say some someone is in their third year and internship drive is coming up right now something such as triver sheet right it is a very comprehensive sheet containing everything including video solutions i would recommend that to a third year person okay so while learning dsa there's a lot of different topics right and the easier topics like array strings linked lists and all people are able to do quite quickly but then there's some advanced algorithms some advanced data structure you have graph you have dynamic programming you have trees that people just feel like they cannot get around it and like a lot of good companies like google itself focuses on the tougher topics like the more advanced topics so how would you say one can tackle the more advanced topics like these dp graph trees etc right so uh, i have been an educator myself and i have been teaching these advanced topics so basically the thing is that let's consider dynamic programming for now your dynamic programming skills are very much dependent on your recursion skills if you can think recursively there is a there is a very niche thing right if you can think recursively like how is my current option going to affect the other options right there is a kind of thinking i can't i can't explain it in words but if you have solved a lot of recursive problems let's say n queens or uh, iterating over all these subsets you have done a lot of recursion when you move on to dynamic programming you won't find it that hard because in dynamic programming what do you have to do let's start with writing a recursive solution okay which runs in whatever time to raise to n then you see that what kind of states i need here okay that is the other thing once you identify these two things you can write a solution you just need to make a dynamic programming table right and then you need to memoize it so if you are finding dynamic programming hard first solve some uh, recursion problems i'll share a sheet okay there are 26 recursion problems there try to solve them after that you can move on to let's say cscs or at coder there is a dynamic programming sheet or lead code itself it has a dynamic programming sheet so it makes things very easier and there are a lot of tutorials online on dynamic programming so watch those videos and solve a lot because the idea is not that i know these five patterns and then i can solve on my own the idea is that you understand dynamic programming and then whenever a dynamic programming problem comes up 
you can come up with those transitions and states by yourself like if you solve dynamic programming in a 2d dp 3d dp 4d dp these are just terms these don't really mean anything the underlying meaning is just you come up with states and on based on how many states you require that dimension of dp you require and for graphs also i would suggest like how did i do it i was very curious one day uh, like for example for some competition there was something known as google hash code and i i was like i want to learn graphs for this particular competition because that competition uh, it was an optimization based competition and graphs were asked so i looked up at what graphs are and usually in all tutorials they first tell you what are nodes what are edges so on and so forth right and then they will teach you that you need to make a adjacency list that time i didn't know how to implement it so i used a map to map of int comma vector to make your to make the uh, adjacency list and then you start with easy problems like you built a tree and then you learn okay i can dfs over a tree using this i can dfs over a tree using this and then you start using them and then you can focus on okay now i've used them let's try to understand how these work and how can i change these and then you can solve harder problems the idea is you can like black box like this is something and this is what it does how it does okay you can maybe uh, not look at that right now solve very simple problems okay let's say connected components in a graph right after that when a hard problem comes up you can since you have solved three four easy problems you kind of now understand how that dfs function works and what it is giving you right so you can modify it now and now solve harder problems so you start with easy you solve a bunch of medium and then you solve hard problems so again it boils down to practice but these are some tips that you can make uh, use of to make uh, graphs dynamic programming and all these concepts easy and at the end of the day you have to solve problems you cannot run away from solving problems you have to solve a lot of problems there is no like one work all formula that you can use in these advanced topics or anything right. like that right and one more thing every person is different right every person has a different intellect so just in case your friend is able to do dynamic programming in like a week or two and you are struggling do not get demotivated because the thing is okay he was able to do it in 50 problems and let's say you will be able to do it in 200 problems but you can still do it in 200 problems right i myself was a very slow learner and had to solve around 2000 problems to get to where i am today no that is true you should not compare yourself so everyone have their own journey of learning right exactly, exactly. they have to go through right so like in the end to the people who are watching this to the people who are you know who want to crack good companies like google fang level companies and they're preparing for interviews they're preparing for dsa what tips or what advice would you give to them right so there are uh, some stages or of where you are at let's say you are just starting out focus on data structures and algorithms right focus on having a good resume with a good ats score if you don't know what a ats score is look that up because at the end of the day where you are submitting your resume it gets shortlisted and a human is not doing this some sort of bot is probably doing this right because there are thousands of applications so a good resume that can be read by the bot it make it helps a lot now for the other people who are done with let's say their dsa is over they are revising their concepts give contests okay because there might be that google microsoft they have their online assessments and to crack these you need to give some contest just give lead code weekly lead code bi weekly if you want to give more contest there's code forces code chef at coder right and apart from that communication skills matter a lot because at the end of the day there are a lot of people who are good at dsa but aren't able to crack google microsoft why because they are not able to express their solution to the inter interviewer so if you are done with dsa have a good friend group that's doing the same thing and give mock interviews to each other if you don't want to give it to your peer group you can connect people on linkedin and you can ask them hey can you help me out uh, with a mock interview 
and i'm sure they'll be uh, they'll help you out you can also reach out to me as well okay and if you want to talk to gorish if you have a doubt for him or if you want to ask him something then you can follow him on linkedin i've given a link in the description from there you can follow him so thanks a lot gorish for appearing on my channel and sharing your journey with me and my subscribers i hope it will help a lot of students so thank you thanks a lot for having me